Buying a boat without a survey or sea trial is one thing, but buying one without even starting the engine? That's just crazy. The craziest part of all is that everything would have turned out all right if the bums had only forked over an extra thousand dollars on this essential part for the engine. These are the tales of Boab. This is way bigger of a job than I thought it was going to be, and we're just getting started. In our last episode, you watched us snap the heads off three bolts while attempting to remove our water pump. Come on, nice and smooth here. Oh my gosh. We pumped the brakes hard, not wanting to break off all of the bolts, and we borrowed some PB Blaster from our friend Bill, and that made a huge difference. So we soaked the remaining bolts with PB Blaster twice a day for five days and just let it rest. And when we finally came back to it, the remaining bolts were really pretty easy to get out. We still had some trouble with the bolts that we broke and we ended up prying off the old water pump. Oh, yep, just snapped right off. First, let's look at the circulation pump. You can see from the backing plate here, we had quite a time getting this off. We had a few broken bolts and nuts. So here is the thermostat housing. That is a mess. I'm pretty sure this thermostat was not doing much. You can see all this just gross gunk. So this little crusty goodness is caused by salt water mixing with fresh water. So now let's jump into the engine. Let's take a look at what caused the salt water to mix with the fresh water in our situation. Here's the water pump. You can see, so this, this piece actually goes on right about here, okay? Here and here and here, this is all where fresh water goes or antifreeze. It's a closed cooling system. This water pump here, it circulates the fresh water or antifreeze. Now, on the other side of things, you have here an impeller that's pulling water from the sea. The raw water is coming up, going around these hoses, and it enters into here. And inside of here is a heat exchanger. And so it's separated. The heat exchanger separates the salt water from the fresh water. And when the thermostat opens up, it's allowing the fresh water to come through here into here and to, to circulate around where the heat exchanger is. Now inside of the heat exchanger you have seawater coming in and going out straight from the sea in and out. So it's exchanging the heat from the fresh water, the antifreeze that's cooling the system and putting it into the salt water that's going out of the boat. We have been learning about our diesel engine since day one of buying the boat. Very first day we tried to start it up and it was a disaster. <laughs> So before we dig any further into the circulation pump and explain our cooling system, we would like to take a little step back in time. So I decided to put these bad boys on just to get into the spirit of things. Whew, it's kind of hot in here, but not as hot as it was in the summer of 2016 in St. Petersburg, Florida. Things, money tones. Look at the, look at the rig, how the rig's been mounted and reinforced. That's new, I haven't seen that. Our engine woes all started on the day that we bought the boat. And it really comes down to not having a sea trial or even having the guy start the engine up before he handed us the keys and walked away. So there was some weird stipulations around buying this boat. The guy, the owner, actually did not live in Florida. He was trying to sell it in Florida and before he flew with two sails and a heat exchanger, he wanted to make sure we were on board to buy it. The thing was he had the heat exchanger out of the engine so that no one could start it up and steal his boat. That was what he said anyways. And he did fly with two brand new sails. He quoted around $8,000 for those sails. So we felt like we were getting a pretty good deal. 
we honestly talked about maybe the engine not working at all, but it was so below our budget, we thought that we could just get a whole new engine and it would still be a good buy. After the owner hands us the keys, says his goodbyes to the boat, and then leaves, the first thing we three decide to do, of course, is start the engine up, see how this bad boy runs. Keep in mind, the seller had just told us this boat was ready to go. You could just sail to the Caribbean today. The boat's ready, sail ready. Now that it's been four years, it's really easy to understand what caused the squeaky loud belt or the geyser of water that squirt eight feet into the sky. But before we get into all that, let's continue along the boys' diesel detective work. Yeah, should we describe that moment? New parts everyone? in. Uh, this was the problem. We had to replace the circulation pump. The circulation pump and the thermostat went bad because of this big hunk here. The elbow for the exhaust. So the engine exhaust and the salt water, this, they come in here together and then they're flushed out the back of the boat. Well, this was clogged. And so it was backing up and it was blowing the boot that holds the seawater and the antifreeze blowing it a little open and letting anti or, uh, salt water slip into the antifreeze in the cooling system. So we got to the bottom of everything actually, all the way down to the elbow causing the backup flow, causing the salt to mix with the fresh water, causing the circulation puff to gunk up, causing the thermostat to stick. We got all that figured out, but we just made one crucial mistake in the research department. The mistake was that we didn't know the exhaust elbow is a disposable piece to an engine. At $1,000, that's quite an expensive disposable piece. We asked around, we came to the conclusion that we can clean the exhaust elbow out and our method was very ineffective. Our first one, I've, I've cleaned this elbow probably 10 times now, but we decided we could clean the elbow out and we could replace the circulation pump and the thermostat, which actually looked a lot worse. Although you're not even able to see inside of the exhaust elbow, so we couldn't even really see what was going on in there. Circulation pump was only about $150. So we decided let's do a new circulation pump, new thermostat, let's clean out the exhaust elbow and we should be good to go. Let's go back to the very first sign that what we did was not enough. And it all started when Jimmy, one of our experts, took us out and he was showing us how to pick an anchor up by motoring your boat um, with a floaty ball of some sort. Put this on the anchor line. Don't drop it, whatever you do. And you're gonna hook the ball to that. You don't throw the ball overboard. Where's the ball at? To your, to your port side. It's right, you're almost on top of it, port side. Okay, now it's going way pull down. It in by hand. It's dipped. You pull it in by hand. It didn't work for our sailboat, but he ran at higher RPMs than we had ever run it because we were afraid to run it that high. Um, he, but he, he knew boats a lot better than us, motor boats especially, and he, 27, 2800 RPMs. So when we got back, we actually ran at ground, but when we went down to look at our engine, we saw water in the overflow tank. We were coming in late. Jimmy's tired, ready to go home. We we're just gonna park the boat call of the day and we got stuck like six times that far from our marina that's our marina's beach so we're here in the channel at camping low tide out. <laughs> camping out on the hook and I want to get this mic'd up the right way here get out of here the engine overheated to get out of the sand we had to rip on the engine and pin it so we opened I opened this up to shut the engine off and it was antifreeze everywhere we thought that our engine overheated. That's how the overflow tank should work, is if you get anything in there, that means your engine got hot and the water expanded out into the overflow tank. We saw that and that should have been a sign that what we did was not enough and the elbow is not allowing enough water to flow through. But we thought we overheated the engine because we ran it too hard. And then we went down a whole nother cookie trail, which uh, eventually led us to just run the engine at low RPMs. We realized when we kept it around 1800 RPMs, we never overheated. In other words, water never came into the overflow tank. Everything seemed to run okay. 
And that's what got us through all these years. I think we still have an engine that can be saved. Cleaning out the exhaust elbow definitely bought us some time. Running the engine at low RPMs is what allowed us to make it this far. However, the problem is reoccurring and it's getting worse. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what's been happening. This is the back boot. This is the culprit. This is where the salt water is mixing with the fresh water in our situation. There's a boot on each side of the exhaust manifold and this is on the back portion. And from here, this is where the salt water comes out and goes into the exhaust elbow. And that's the part that's clogged. So when it's trying, when you run it at higher RPMs, it's trying to move more water. It has nowhere to go. So it, it gets stuck in this boot here and it blows this boot up just enough to, to allow the water somewhere to go and it goes into the closed system. And then it starts to overflow and, and it acts as if it's overheated. And if you keep running it, water will just keep coming into the boat. Okay, so that brings us to a super exciting announcement, but I think you guys have had enough of me, so I'm gonna let Michael tell you. This is the exciting news. We've been spending a lot of money. We have new parts, on the way, the most exciting of which is a custom-made exhaust elbow. There's a guy named Ben out there who makes custom stainless steel exhaust elbows, and he was willing to give it a go with just pictures and measurements and nothing that he could hold. He, he made one that may work for our boat. It's in the mail. He's already shipped it. We're going to get it hopefully within the week, and we'll be able to test that out. In addition to the elbow, we've got brand new boots coming, we've got a brand new water circulation pump, we've got brand new thermostat, we've got a kit to redo the impeller, we've got hoses, we've got all new hose clamps, and we've been cleaning this engine like crazy. So we're really excited to make Volvo Penta shine again and hopefully she's going to work like she's never worked before. We're only just beginning to dig into the Volvo Penta and we have great plans for her. I think she's yeah. going to be looking pretty good. If you're not familiar with this kind of issue, it can be a really big deal. We've heard it called one of the deadliest kinds of engine failures. It can lead to all sorts of stuff. Yeah, the cool cooling system, because if your cooling system fails and your engine overheats, then you can get into some serious problems that we would maybe be afraid of DIYing. And there's been a lot of jobs that we've taken on DIY, go for it, but the, the cracked head gasket, pistons going warped and all that uh, that could be hairy we'd probably try to give it a run but i think it would be really really defeating that would be nuts so we've kind of dodged a bullet we think this thing is salvageable we think she's about ready to run we even think we learned something i think we learned a lot i feel like i know a lot more about it than i did when we first bought the boat i knew nothing and now i know something so yes we've made progress on that note we'll see you next time thank you for watching bye guys these are the tales of Boab! so quiet.